Hello everyone and welcome to today's lunchtime learning. Today we are going to be talking about multiple line text as shown in this sample design. This pumpkin design can be downloaded from the Embrilliance project blog and the lettering that we have that says happy fall has been created using the multiple line text tool of Embrilliance Essentials with the bean stitch font available from the romance collection. So let's pop into the software and let's see how easy it is to create this design and investigate some of the controls that are available to you with multiple line text for any font that you have installed in Essentials. Let's pop into the software and we have a blank embroidery hoop. I know that I'm going to want to create this design layout in my 4x4 hoop. Mine's currently set to 130 by 180, which is the brother 5x7 hoop. And we can change it by going to hoop properties or going to properties, selecting hoops. From the pull down, we have our format selected. I'm going to scroll down through my hoops. Now, one thing to notice, I have, as I mentioned, 130 by 180 selected. I know that's my five by seven because it tells me approximate inch size next to it. So since I know that I want the four by four hoop in the PES format, I'm going to choose 100 by 100, which tells me four by four. Machine embroidery is metric, but inches are more familiar, which is why Embrilliance has added that approximate size value here so that you can find the hoop that you want to use quickly and easily. Now the option here says apply to the page because I just want it for this one project that we're working on. So I will click apply, click OK, and here's my 4x4 hoop on display. Now I'm going to merge in the pumpkin design. I need to know where it is on my computer. So I'm going to go to the merge stitch file button which allows me to browse all the designs on my computer. I happen to know that it's in my documents folder in a folder called data 99 in designs. I know you're going to have to know where your designs are located. I have a folder called the Embrilliance blog and I have a subfolder called autumn designs. This is where I happen to organize the Embrilliance design files from the project blog into different categories. If you notice in the autumn, I also have my spider earrings, which are available from the project blog. But I'm going to select this pumpkin design because that's where I put it. I'm going to click on import and here it gets imported into the center of my hoop. Now, once it's in my hoop, I can move it anywhere I want by selecting it and moving it to where I'd like to have it situated. And I was thinking, if I put it in the lower corner, I can put a couple lines of text in here that would fill in this space to make it a nice towel embroidery design or maybe for a tote bag or something. Either way, I have a project in mind and I'd like to put Happy Fall right next to it. So I move it down there so that I can notice about how much space I have. The next step that I have list, um, that's going on with this design is it's going to, if I look at the object pane here, I see that it has brought in my design and it's named pumpkin applique because that's the file name that it was given. It's also hasn't been saved yet. So the first thing I'm going to do before I go any further is I'm going to go to my file menu and I have options here. I can choose save both the stitch and the working file, but I'm not really done working on my design yet. I'm not ready to go to my embroidery machine. I don't save my stitch file until I'm ready to put the USB in, save the stitch file to the USB, and go to my embroidery machine. The only thing I want to save to my computer hard drive is save the working file. Can you save both to the, your hard drive? Absolutely. We have just given you multiple options for saving in case you wanted to organize your BE files to keep them separate so that you can always come back and not overwrite them by accident. So I'm going to choose my save working file as, and I'm going to type in a name for it. And the name I'm going to give it is something, I'm going to type in happy fall pumpkin. Any name you want, but this is what makes sense to me. And I'm going to put it back into the project blog because why not? Then I know where it is. 
Okay, so it has a name, which means I can save my steps along the way. I won't lose my work. The next thing I want to do is add text. So let's make this, I'm going to make my, fill my screen with my hoop as big as possible. One way to do that is by going up here to the compass rose and clicking on the H key, the H button here. What the H button here in our compass rose does is allows, is does, it's a one quick function. You click on it and poof, it zooms to your hoop right here on the screen. Now, most of those functions, I should say the other two options, the letter A will zoom to all stitches and the letter S will zoom to a selection. So those three can be activated by clicking on either one of those buttons. They also work with your keyboard keys, except however, if you click on the H button, it turns your hoop on and off. So that's a quick toggle to turn your hoop off, which is really kind of nice if you don't want to be limited by your hoop. But if you are missing your hoop, don't forget to hit the H key. If you hit the A key, it will zoom to all stitches. And if you were to happen to select a specific color, like me, let me grab the um, two column stitches for this and hit the S key, it will zoom just to that selection. Also, it works the same way here. So if I click on the S key here, it zooms to, whoopsie, that's a selection that didn't do anything. Hit the A, it zooms to all stitches. Go up here, hit the H key and it hits zooms to your hoop. Just a quick run through of a few of the power user shortcuts that you may not be aware of in your Brilliant software. I digress. Let's add some lettering. So I'm going to click on my big letter A here, which puts ABC in the center of my hoop. And it also opens up our dialog, which allows you to put, type in your lettering. ABC corresponds to the three letters that we see here. If you happen to be missing this properties pane, and it happens more often on Windows than on the Mac, but if you're missing it, go to your view menu and you will see an option at the top that says to reset your views. It's probably on Windows, I think it says reset win menu and views or something like that. Um, that's the option you want to choose if you're missing this. You can't miss lose it on Mac without turning it off. But the reset button always puts it back. And I digress again, but that's okay. I put my ABC here in the hoop. I'm gonna, if I click off of it and I want to select it again, I simply have to put my mouse cursor on stitches and left click. That selects the stitches and lets me move it to wherever I'd like. Now I know in my head that I want to use multiple line text. So looking at my properties here, I have three buttons at the top. The first one is multi-line, the default is singular line, and the third one is circular text. You can find lots of videos on this entire letterings property box on our Brilliance YouTube channel all about lettering playlists. We're going to, for this example, we're going to choose multi-line text. Now the way that multi-line text works is that you have to select whatever text is in that box, that dialog box, and type new text. So if I click type in happy and hit the enter key on my keyboard and click and then type in fall with an exclamation point, enter doesn't do anything to the display as you notice. It simply is like a carriage return on the old fashioned typewriter. It goes down below. You actually have to hit the set button. When you're working with singular line text, so let me delete, let me go back here, click on my letter A to ABC, and let's go to singular text. This works is if I hit happy and then hit the enter key to make a new lettering object or new line, it actually just changes happy. So in singular line or circular text, there is no set. So, but we are working in multi-line text, which uses the carriage return or enter key to get multiple lines. And then once you have your multiple lines of text, you can click the set button and there you have it. Now, our font lit name here is 
the font we're using is block font because that's the default font. And I know that I want to use romance. So I'm going to select this font list, type in the romance RO to get hop down there. And I'm going to choose the romance bean script five pass because this is actually rather large area. So I, if I chose the three pass, it might be too small. I chose five pass thinking it'd be a little heavier and sure enough it is, but it doesn't really, it's not lined up. Underneath our font list, do you see we have a left, a center, and a right? If I click on the, right now it's centered. Fall is centered right underneath ha uh, happy. If I click on the left button, it justifies it right to the left-hand side. Same goes for the right-hand side. So either way you want it justified and centered, those are three options that aligns your text for you automatically. And this is a multiple line text function. I'm going to put it on left because I do want it to start on the left side. I'm going to move it on closer in a second. But the other thing I notice is that the lines are a little bit far apart. So I'm going to use my this bottom spacing that says line space. There's a slider bar here and I'm going to take it and move it closer to the left side. And that makes the lines a little bit closer together. So I don't need to do any custom adjusting. I can simply use the line spacing to move them. Now I do have to pay attention. These have descenders, the P and the Y. So I can't get too close together, but I can make it nice and easy. So it's already justified. And I can select this and move it on over to the spacing here and uh, looks, it's pretty close. I might be able to move my pumpkin over a little bit more just to make sure I get it maximum in the hoop <laughs> and have it set almost perfectly. Now, the one thing that's nice about the native fonts and Romance, the Bean Stitch is a native font, is that if I wanted to make it a little bit smaller, I can just scrunch it up and it automatically recalculates and does what it's supposed to do. Just if I needed just a little bit more space in between the exclamation point and the pumpkin. So wasn't that easy <laughs> as far as being able to create your lettering text? The uh, sliding adjusters make it so simple because what you do right here, the dialog box is done right here on the screen. So you don't have to do any fussing. Anyway, I thought that I would pop in and show you some of the quick and easy lettering adjustments that can be done with the multiple line text tool with a free design available to you from the Embrilliance Project blog. Thanks for taking time to watch this video today. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you are notified when we post videos there so that you can create your own playlist to have instructions on how to use the Embrilliant software programs. Take care.